first of all, congratulations on the Grammy nomination. That is Thank so, you. so exciting. Yeah, we are so excited. Like, it was totally unexpected. And we literally woke up um, the other morning and there was an email from our producer. And it was like, hey guys, we've been nominated for a Grammy. I was like, what? So it was great, and also in the same week we were uh, we went to the Billboard uh, World Music Charts at number one, uh -huh. and we, we made the classical charts for the first time ever going into number one. So it was just a, a week of surprises and celebration. So it's, it's been great. It's been really um, humbling and and great. Yeah, yeah 2016 is certainly ending on a on an up note. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of notes, mm -hmm. <laughs> you um, first started out as an actress yeah. uh, back when you were 11, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what made you decide to pursue acting um, before singing? Um, well, it was it sort of was a package. I was uh, went to theatre school, so musical theatre mm -hmm. was my main kind of focus and my passion, really. Um, so my mum sent me to um, stage school as a hobby, really. She just wanted me to be busy, have loads of hobbies. So I did loads of different hobbies, but stage school. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the Billy Barry Stage School, which is a really famous stage school in Ireland. So I went there, and I just loved it. It was the one thing that I just stuck to. And I was there from sort of the age of four up until like adulthood, I was like 18 or, and I kind of just fizzled away from it because I was working professionally. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't have time to kind of go back or, and, and kind of the rest is history really. Absolutely, and I know you uh, played Sandy, you were on a, a competition yeah. show and, and you won, mm -hmm. and you were on the West End. Yeah. That must have been amazing to make your West End debut. Yeah, it was something I always wanted to do. I'd moved to London um, a few years previous to the, the TV show and I was kind of doing small bits here and there. I've been working a lot in Ireland and then I kind of made the leap in kind of my early 20s. I decided I really wanted to do West End shows and I wanted to do musical theatre. And there's a, there isn't enough musical theatre work in Ireland. It's, it's, there's not enough work. Mm -hmm. So you have to go to London. You know, like in America, I'm sure people must have to move to New York they if they, do, want to, yeah. they want to work full time in theatre. Yeah. So it's the same in Ireland. We moved to London. So I went there and I was there for a while and then this competition came up and I had an agent and he was like, you know, you should just go for this competition and it's Sandy and you're perfect for it. But I really didn't want to do it. I was like, I just don't, that's not my tea, like pushing myself in the limelight on TV in a, in a competitive environment. Um, but I was convinced I did it anyway and I kind of thought I won't win it, but I might do it to get a bit of exposure. I might get another job out of it, but I won, which was a huge surprise. And, yeah, and then the rest is history. It led on to, to great things for me in London. Really? I mean, you, you could be n no p more perfect for that role, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least from a, a viewer's yeah. standpoint. Yeah, I and always wanted to do it, so it was a dream come true, really. That's amazing. And you also uh, were in Legally Blonde yeah. as yeah. Al Woods. I was there. Yeah, yeah, I loved that. That was the job I did actually just before Celtic Woman. So that was, that's the last um, acting role. I actually, well, yeah, acting role, I guess I did. Now Celtic Woman comes about, do you have to audition for the role or to be a part of mm -hmm. Celtic Woman or yeah. do they come to you? I mean, you? I think everyone's, uh, everyone's way or journey into Celtic Woman is different. Um, me personally, I, like I said, I had just finished playing Elwoods mm -hmm. in the West End and I was sort of taking some time out and just looking for my next role or my next job and, and a call came out of the blue for, to be but I'd be interested in becoming a member of Celtic Woman and I was like, oh, well, I didn't know an awful lot about Celtic Woman because I had been living away from Ireland. I'd been living in London in a completely different world, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew Chloe and Lisa Kelly, who were in the group at the time mm -hmm. and had been in it for a few years and I'd followed them on social media and I just knew that they were in this amazing show that was doing so well in the States and all over the world. Um, and so when I got the call, I was like, oh, that's that show the girls are in. That's really that's really cool. Like, and I was did my research, and I was like, yeah, this is definitely something that I want to be a part of. So I met up with the uh, musical director at the time, and uh, he sent me some material to sing. So mm -hmm. I just sang it for him, just to see what I fit in um, vocally. And um, yeah, and it all worked. And the rest out. is Here history. You've, yes, you fit yeah. in, and you continue to fit in. Yeah. Um, now, what um, preparation do you do to go out on the road? I know it must be hard. You've got to leave your friends and your family. And you've been gone quite a lot this year, right? You had yeah, the Destiny tour. It's been a very busy, like that's two years have been really busy, I have to say. We haven't stopped. We haven't been home a lot. And then when we were at home, we were actually in rehearsals. But, you know, it was great because you got to go home at the end mm. of the day. But, yeah, I mean, I think really the most prep you do is emotionally prep yourself. Like, you know, because you're leaving your family. Um, the, the longest tour we do every year is our spring tour, which is four months straight through in the States and we don't go home. Mm -hmm. so that's hard and it's difficult too for our family to visit us because we move so much. We're in a different city, different states sometimes every day. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just basically 
making sure you have uh, all your Irish tea bags and chocolate <laughs> and potato chips. We, we bring a big stack. We have a suitcase full of just food and bits and bobs. Is, <laughs> it, is it different than here, the, the chips and stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we have our, our just this Irish potato chips called Tato. Everyone okay. Irish will know what I mean. Uh -huh. um, and they're just, you just can't get them anywhere. Uh, like in the world, they're just not as good. And um, and our, our tea bags, Irish tea bags, Barry's tea, have to bring them. Well, you have to be comfortable on the road and you have to have some of the yeah. comforts from I home. Love, I, I would drink like eight cups of tea at home. So when I come here, there's no exception. <laughs> now you joined in 2012 and since then, you know, you've been the mainstay, you're the longest vocalist at this point. Yeah. What's it like to, to change ladies and to change, you know, it must change the entire dynamic yeah. of the show. Oh yeah, well it's been, for me, it's it's been constantly changing since I arrived into the group in 2012. There's been a change every year or mm -hmm. every six months. So I, I'm very used to change within Celtic Woman. Um, but it's great. I mean, I mean the whole concept of Celtic Woman, it was never about oh, an original lineup. It's it's been a constant flow of women in and out of the group for, for the last 12 years mm -hmm. to showcase as much female Irish talent as we can. And I think that's what's great for the audience is that there's always something new, there's always someone fresh. Mm -hmm. And it does, I mean, it changes the dynamic personally, it will change the dynamic backstage and, you know, and luckily it's always been for the better. And on stage too, I mean, like, I mean, Ava came in vocally, she was, she's the, the latest vocalist to join. Mm -hmm. And like, she has been totally different vocally than anyone else that has ever joined. And we were so excited, actually myself and Maraid, Carlin, when Ava joined, we were like, this is so great because she was so unique. Um, sure you know like she's such she a unique so it's great in that sense when somebody new comes in it just changes your job too because you now have to adapt and it keeps things fresh and we've tara mcneil now where our latest fiddle player yeah and again it's just it's just great to have all this fresh talent and when people come in they're so excited and you know it can be exhausting being on the road and sometimes you might have your days you're like i'm so tired and i just want to go home but when somebody new comes in they remind you why we all do this because yeah. they're so enthusiastic. They're they're so up for it, and, and it's great. It gives everyone a, a, a boost. And now I have to admit, I became a fan through the Emerald tour, and yeah. so having that DVD, you know, to look back on it, it's I love just that DVD, it's actually. so incredible. Like the three of you are just you're on fire in that oh. performance, and it, the chemistry was just so on point there, and it was just yeah. I was surprised at the different staging of mm -hmm. the songs. Really, yeah. From that to this show, when it's you very know, different now, yeah. 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 Again, it's just you know, I think Celtic Woman had a certain concept for so many years, and you have to just maybe now and again just turn things around mm -hmm. a little, give the audience something new, you know. And I think actually with Destiny, um, that was the first time that Celtic Woman have really gone for something different. Yes. Like staging wise, they really kind of stripped everything back, and they wanted it just to be about really the four girls and no distractions really, and just to make it about the music and. Mm -hmm and the big screen at the back which is bringing bringing Ireland to the audience you know as much as the music and all the dancing is doing that it's nice that you can bring the imagery from Ireland here people feel like they're they're there like yeah and how do you keep the stamina up on stage I know just from seeing up close the DVD and being able to see your facial expressions yeah. and you're very into the whole performance mm. and you're very sweet the whole time how do you keep up that that persona, you're actually acting and singing at the same yeah. time. I think we just enjoy it. I think, yeah. I, I, mean, I know me too, like my face tells everyone, like it's just so, it's so transparent. So you'd know if I wasn't enjoying myself <laughs> here, like you would, but no, I think that's what it is. We do really enjoy it. I mean, and, and it's like, it's that old age thing of showbiz and you might be so tired and homesick, but as soon as you walk out on that stage, as soon as the music starts, something just kicks in just takes over yeah and it's like you find a new a new love for it every night and this is the audience the audiences in the states are incredible like they're better here than anywhere else in the world like and i can say that no problem because they're just so they're so with you they're so encouraging and like from the moment you walk out on stage they're whooping and they're hollering and they're with you and yeah. it actually makes you go okay this is great and it encourages you and you know they're enjoying it so then you can enjoy it knowing that they are too so well, that's a testament to your talent and the talent of the other ladies. I mean, it's just an engrossing show. The entire time, there is, you can't take your eyes off the stage. Thank you. And you probably don't want us to, correct? No, no. <laughs> something's wrong if you're doing that. That's right. Do you have a favorite song to perform, whether it be um, one of the Christmas ones or? Let me think. Yeah, I actually love the Christmas show. I mean, to perform with a symphony orchestra, like, that's any singer's dream. Mm -hmm. Like, it really is the, the icing on the cake for me personally. 
um, and I sing a song called It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. And when it was put in the show, it was it was originally kind of put in with me in mind. Because I think when I first started Celtic Woman, my vocal style was probably different than maybe some of the girls that had come before. And it was probably more musical theatre as opposed to traditional Celtic or soprano, which is um, sort of what had embodied Celtic Woman before. So I always felt I was dying to just do what I do. Mm -hmm. And our solos are our moments where we step away from the group and actually show off what your strengths are. So um, David Downs it was the musical director at the time, so he, he wrote this version of, it came, composed this version of It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. And mm -hmm. when we did it in the special, we had this amazing gospel choir. And it was just such a moment. And I sing it on the Christmas tour now, and I just love it. Every night I feel like, right, so I'm going to have a Mariah moment here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my favorite. That's amazing. Um, what traditions do you have for Christmas that you're looking forward to getting back to Ireland and partaking in? Um, traditions at Christmas would, for me is just being with the family. Mm -hmm. um, my mum is very excited this year because we're all going to be home. I have a brother and he has two daughters and we're going to all be with her and my mm -hmm. dad in the house. And uh, she's just so looking forward to cooking Christmas dinner. And that's my favourite meal of the whole year. It's my mum's. Christmas dinner and she makes the most amazing stuffing and roast potatoes so <laughs> that's it that's just that's our biggest tradition we don't do a lot on Christmas day we just literally sit in the house together we eat food and we just play with it board games or whatever you know and yeah. it's just about being together well after being on tour that's exactly. going to be certainly yeah, welcome and jet right lag as well we're always so jet lagged at Christmas so we, we sleep <laughs> a couple of years ago I think I just literally slept eight slept <laughs> Not a bad life, right? No. After touring for so long. Exactly. What, besides the audience, what motivates you to really bring your A game when you get on stage? Do, do you feed off the audience, or if you're having a bad day when you walk out, does it just like, oh, I have to? Um, I mean, I suppose yeah, you you do feed off the audience, but it's also a responsibility too that it's just, you know you have a responsibility. People are coming to see this show. Mm -hmm. They've paid good money. Um, they've been watching. Celtic Woman on PBS or they've been watching the shows for 12 years so you have a responsibility to maintain that sort of you know the quality that has been set from day one and also for yourself you have a pride in your own mm -hmm. job and in what you do and you know there are times when you walk out and you go oh I'm a bit tired okay and it's, it is it's that thing there's something just takes over and yeah well, you certainly deliver every time you get on stage. You're perfect. You have a perfect voice, and and you can really tell you enjoy what you do. And I really appreciate you taking the time before the show no to sit down with me. Thank you very much. Thank you.